Hello, I hope you're well. In this video, I'll be making a simple little DIY router shelf pin jig using just a small piece of six mil or quarter inch plywood like this. So what's the big deal about shelf pin holes? Well, it's simply that you don't have to make many cabinets before you realize that you're gonna need a shelf in there. And it's convenient to have that shelf adjustable for different sized items. And one of the easiest ways to do that is on a row of holes. The de facto standard is five mil holes on 32 mil centers. And there are many ways to achieve these from inexpensive acrylic drilling guides like this to the much more pricey holy grail of shelf pin holes, Festool's Holy Rail or LR32. Whatever system you choose though, if it's under a hundred quid, you're probably gonna be using a drill, not a router. And a router has lots of benefits, not least of which are speed and dust collection. By and large though, all these shelf pin solutions are dedicated systems, one trick ponies if you like. And what I really wanted was a multi-purpose, multi-functional straight edge ruler of some kind with a row of holes on 32 mil centers that I can make a simple jig to fit. And that's basically what we have with this bench dog precision ruler. So the precision rulers are the latest in the uh, measuring and marking tools from bench dogs following on from the precision triangle, the carpenter's square and the magnificent stainless steel T-squares. And in the interest of transparency, these products were supplied for review. I haven't been paid to make this video or to say nice things about the products. As a bench dogs affiliate, I may earn from qualifying sales. So be sure to use the offer code 10minute workshop at checkout for a 5% discount across the board at Bench Dogs Co UK. And I'd like to thank Ralph at Bench Dogs for extending that offer. So the precision rulers are really nice with clear white on black markings. My eyesight's never been the best and it's not getting any better. So clear scales that are easy to read and start where the metal ends rather than some arbitrary distance in board. They're available in three sizes with accessories like plates to join the rulers together precisely, an end hook and a marking pin. But the main feature for my purposes is this row of five millimeter holes on 32 millimeter centers all along the length of the ruler. Perfect for a shelf pin jig. So let's get cracking with that. So the jig itself is really simple to make. It's made from six mil birch ply, so it's easy to make this rebate that sits over the ruler. You've got a five mil hole in the center there that uh, you can put a pin through to locate in the row of holes on the ruler. You've got notches above and below so that it's easy to see those holes. And you can also use those uh, with an extra pin to mark in and out points if you're doing a run of holes. And then you've got a 30 mil hole uh, further over here to take a standard 30 mil guide bush and that's on 96 mil centers from this central 5 mil hole. Now I've got a set of plans available for this but I've got to be honest with you the sizes don't really matter that much. We'll take most of the important dimensions off the ruler that we're using. Don't let that stop you picking up a set of plans. I'll link them up down below but really it's pretty straightforward. The only thing I would say with the measurements on this if you're using the bench dogs ruler uh, 160 mil on the short side is quite handy uh, i think this piece is about 380 long but none of that really matters the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rip a strip off this about 30 mil and we want the main body of this to be about 210 mil Now the reason I say the 160 mil as the height was convenient is because you can take any uh, regular inch ruler, butt that up against the edge, and then use your bench dogs rule, and that will give you the center line. We can then take our little 30 mil strip, and we can get that centered on that center line. We're going to take our little marking pin and we give that a little tap. And then we're going to take out on all, before I had the marking pin, I made a couple of these just using an awl and it worked fine. But we're going to take an awl and then we're going to go one, two holes across and we're going to mark the inside edge of that hole, not the center, the inside edge. One, two. Okay, so with those marked, I'm just going to get rid of that. We're going to keep the pin in there and we're just going to rotate 
the ruler around so that it centers on that line and then we're going to go one two three over so it's on a 96 mil center and we'll mark that again now we're just going to take that take a line up Six. I'm going to measure back 37. So if that all seems a little bit convoluted, it'll all become clear very soon. So over at the rejuvenated drill press now, I've set up stops for both the first 5mm and the second position as well and what I'm going to do, I've got a 5mm drill bit in the drill press, I'm just going to drill that out. Over at the router bench I'm cutting the notches that make it easier to locate the jig on the ruler and I've set the fence depth so I just touch the points that I marked earlier on with the awl. and then I can nibble away at the notches. They're only about 10 mil either side of the center line and flipping the workpiece over to do the other side. Okay, so we've got our three pieces, a little notches cut out here. And what they do is when you get a little pin through there and into the ruler, that locates it. You can see the holes either side. That means that you can use a pin in there if you want to set in and out points, or it's just easier to see instead of doing all this business, you can just see where the hole is going to be so you don't scratch up the surface of the ruler. What we're going to do now is we're going to join this together. I'm just using double-sided tape for this because it's quick and easy, but all we're going to do, if you're doing this at home and you want to do this as a keeper then I'd add some glue in there as well. We're going to pop the pin through there, we're going to put our ruler on there and with a smaller strip and a square, just square that up you can just pop that strip in and butt that up tightly against the ruler. And then we can do the same thing. To the other side, just making sure it lines up nicely. Doesn't have to be perfect, we're going to trim the ends off afterwards. So now we've got a jig that sits on our ruler and slides really well. I'm going to add a little bit of pressure to our double sided tape by using a clamp little squeeze clamp. I recommend adding some glue in there if you're doing this for real rather than making a video. But I'll also say that all my prototypes were held together with double-sided tape and they're doing just fine. So before we get to the drill press I'm just going to trim this end off just to even it up. So back at the drill press, uh, I swapped out the 5mm bit that was in here for a 30mm Forstner bit without moving anything. So we know we've got the stops in and that's set up and 
ready to go so we can just drill that through. Okay, went a little bit further through than I expected. And then the last thing we need to do is on the bandsaw, just cut out those corner notches and they give us the 37 millimeter setback. So how does this work? Well, it's pretty simple. We've got our ruler and we've got our little jig that slides along it. We want to butt our bottom of the ruler against the bottom edge of the carcass. Our bench dogs sell uh, an end hook to do that, or you can just butt it up manually, or if you really want to, you can pop a pin in there and butt it up that way. I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way, like this. And then we line up the notch in the edge against the edge of our carcass and that gives us the 37 millimeter setback that we need. We'll just pop a quick spring clamp on that. Do the same at the top and pop a clamp on that. Then either lining up against the center line that you've already done we're lining up with the middle of the rule that gives you the center. If you like, you can come back one, two spaces, one, two, to give you the in and out points. And then you just use a, a router with a 30 mil guard bush, which is a nice snug fit. Oop. Need a dust collection. And then we can just So there you go, that's a super simple little DIY uh, router jig designed to make your precision ruler into a uh, shelf pin drilling powerhouse. Um, I use the Bench Dogs Precision Ruler for this because I've got it and it's really good. Obviously if you have another ruler or something similar that will do the 32 millimeter spacings then you can adapt the plans to suit that. You could use one of these simple acrylic drilling guides if you've got one. The holes in this obviously are bigger than the 5 mil holes in the Bench Dogs Ruler. Uh, mine has a 3 8 or 9.5 millimeter hole in there so a simple 3 8 or 9.5 mil dowel uh, would replace the 5 mil pin for that. But obviously, I'll leave that up to you. You can adapt your plans, <laughs> adapt my plans to suit. This was quite gear heavy. I've used the drill press, I've used the bandsaw, I've used the router bench. Uh, I had to buy the 30 mil Forstner bit because I didn't have one of those. Certainly not one that was good enough. That cost me 20 quid. You know, there's, it's not expensive, but if you were starting from scratch, it's not free either. And I've gone ahead and made this available as a simple three-piece CNC'd flat pack kit. If you're interested in that, then this is available in my Etsy store now at 10 Minute Dot Shop, along with the full set of digital plans for this DIY build. This whole build came from an idea from Bill, uh, 10 Minute Workshop Plus member Bill. Thanks, Bill. Uh, as always, I want to thank my channel members, and if you'd like to be part of the conversation, part of the community that helps shape the content of these public facing videos like Bill did, as well as getting access to behind the scenes and exclusive content, then do come and join us as a 10 Minute Workshop Plus member. 10 Minute Workshop Plus is my new independent member platform. There are full details at 10minuteworkshop.com or sign up directly at 10minuteworkshop.plus. We'd love to have you on board and taking part, but that's it for this week. Thanks so much for taking a look and I'll see you in the next one. All right, take care.